Now the awkward climb up the stairs. Hey, that table! How are you? Yeah, that's gonna happen a lot. Hey, where are you all from? What's your uh, what's your blood type? Do you have anyone to notice if you disappear? <laughs> Survey says no. This is information that's good for me. That's just the beginning of my creepy jokes I'll be telling. Uh, so last time I was at Gordo's, it was like fucking 38 degrees outside. I've taken off my jacket. That's a great idea. Um, the time before that, it was chilly and cold. I'd waited for it to get warm before I decided to come back to Gordo's. So thank God I did that. <laughs> Next time I'm on, I expect a fucking Sharknado. Reign of Frogs. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself as soon as I have this beverage. I like the younger men. Both for eating and for fucking. Yeah. They're tender either way. <laughs> Gets harder to ignore you if the speaker's facing you. <laughs> so I do like my men younger. Uh, my fiance is 13 years younger than I am, which is like an entire sexual awareness younger than I am. Um, a whole puberty awakening. Um, it's, it's great in some ways. Uh, in some ways, it's not so great. Uh, like when we do things like binge watch uh, shit on Netflix. We watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer recently. This was actually a few years ago. Um, oh, for those of you that are too young to know this too, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a show that was on in the 1900s <laughs> that had vampires before we pussied them right into whatever. Um, so we're watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and one of the characters, Willow, is breaking into the city's records. And this motherfucker turns to me and says, um, they computerized city records. It, it was fucking 1997. We had fire in the wheel too, you dickhead. He has literally asked me what life was like before it was colorized. <laughs> dickhead. In spite of my love of younger men, I do have to talk a minute. I know this is a cliche, but we have to discuss what's in Steve Carell's drinking water. <laughs> because that motherfucker went through some like middle-aged Neville Longbottom shit that has taken him from a rubber, rubber-faced weirdo to hello daddy, hello daddy. Oh, you're not daddy. You're just in a, oh, your car isn't even that cute. Clearly, my glasses already need a prescription change. So, um, does anyone else wonder if Steve Carell's no-no thatch is also silver and beautiful the way his beard is? <laughs> is that just me? I want to break his hip. <laughs> this is going great. Who likes karaoke? Hey, you guys, you like karaoke? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Wasn't an invitation, ma'am. <laughs> But you can try if you'd like. I keep getting distracted by cars. This is not a good show. I'm not doing well. Um, no matter what bar you're at, no matter what town, no matter where you are, is the same old fucking guy named Bob singing karaoke there? Yes. Yeah, it's every time. It's every time. I don't think Bob is human, but I haven't figured out yet. Because it is literally the same guy named Bob. It is. I haven't figured out yet if it's a situation where when you download all of your shit, you get all your equipment hooked up, all of that, um, that the first time you're a KJ. Finally, the moment has come, all the poontang you can handle. <laughs> and there you are, hooking up your machines and you got your computers and you get your speaker and everything. And then you like flip the switch and you download your first thousand songs and Bob shows up at the mic and sings New York, New York. Or, Rather than taking holographic form, he's simply Bob the karaoke demon and he's made some sort of weird pact with every KJ in the world. And he like lets you know via code how you're doing. Like if he sings Billy Joel's like she's got the she's got the way, you know, something mellow, you're fine. But the second under pressure starts, you're in trouble. Much like this set. 
my friend told me that her dad had started this side business. I thought he was a lawyer. Her whole family is lawyers. He's a graphic designer, which actually makes this better because this is such a wholesome, retired dad kind of graphic designer fucking thing to do. Uh, he gets old bikes and he fixes them up and he sells them on Craigslist, which is fabulous. Um, he informs her very excitedly that he got a burner phone. He gives her this card and it has a number on it she's never seen before. She's like, what the hell is this, Dad? It's my burner phone. <laughs> Your burner phone. Yeah, my burner phone. He was so excited. No one had given him the memo that burner phones are for cheaters, drug dealers, and people that don't want to give their boss their real number. And so he was very excited about this. She's like, hold on there, Muggsy. This isn't breaking bad. But I'm picturing like somebody's gotten a hold of this card. <laughs> and he's like this Tony Soprano type guy. He's talking to his associates. And he's like, so I got to ask you. Who's handling your non-combustion transportation needs? Because I got a bike guy. I got a bike guy. It's okay, he's got a burner phone. Everything's fine. It's okay to pretend to laugh. <laughs> this is seriously the worst I've ever done, y'all. Woo! Woo! Let's give it up for failure! Woo! Anyone ever deep liked a picture yeah. on Facebook or Instagram? Or really weird in a photo album, but that's just intrusive. That involves a Sharpie. You'll get that later. Um, I was going through some photos on Facebook, and I, um, I realized that I was deep liking some folks that I hadn't talked to in a while, and then some folks that I wasn't actually friends with, and some folks I've just met in stores and probably shouldn't know where their Facebook is. And... Um, I was liking photos that were two and three years old and that was really not okay. Deep liking, you know, when you go back too far and you like something just a little further back than the normal person would look. But um, I've decided I don't give a shit about deep liking anymore. I'm gonna do it. And if you have a problem with it, uh, feel free to offer me a survey and I will tell you exactly the reason why I deep liked your photo. I remember when your child was born. It was kind of weird looking. I was seeing if that had cleared up. <laughs> I too enjoy natural wonders. How was your trip to the Grand Canyon? Were you seeing that bitch then too? <laughs> Did you push her in? I absolutely love that Mark referred to me as the confusingly sexy comedy aunt. I want that on a shirt because here's the thing. Here's the thing table in the back. I can say literally anything I want. There's seriously a snake right there. I'm not even kidding. It's right by your foot. Nope, nothing. So um, I realized that things that I did when I was younger, I can't really do now in the same way that I thought I could. Um, I, I, I usually feel younger than I am, uh, usually because of the ridiculous way that I'm dressed, uh, like a toddler with a little bit of an edge. Um, and so I, um, I will just be talking to my comedy friends, and most of my comedy friends are quite a bit younger than I am. My theater friends are younger, and so I'll be around these younger folks, and I will just start busting balls the way I would with people my own age, or would have when I was younger, like they're just other people to me. But these poor, fresh-faced little Dalmatians are looking at me like I'm Cruella DeVille, like she's gonna make coats out of us. <laughs> like I realize I say things that would just be normal, okay things to say to me. <laughs> But when you tell one of your fellow comedians, no, I'm sure your junk is smooth and beautiful, and I promise there's context to that, but, and he looks at you with Jesus fucking Christ in his eyes, you sort of feel every minute of the 43. I like weed. That woke y'all up. I also take CBD oil. CBD oil is the LaCroix of weed. 
It's doing something. <laughs> but it's not usually... Like, I could get fucked up and listen to some, like, EDM and really get into this cookie batter. It's more like, my shoulder has stopped hurting and I'm slightly less depressed. <laughs> Which is how I feel after I have a, what is it, Pomplemousse? Pomplemousse, LaCroix? Whatever the grapefruit one is with the pretentious uh, name. Uh, it's French. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this abortion of a set on this note. Anyone uh, like the Wish app? Okay, y'all gotta be into yeah. the Wish app. I can't be the, all right, good, good, good. If you don't know, the Wish app is a place where you can buy extremely cheap shit from China for like a buck and a buck shipping. And it's Christmas every day because by the time it gets to you, you done forgot you ordered it. <laughs> I have shit in my mailbox every day. I didn't spend more than $3 on any of it. So I realized that I'm kind of naive in my old age because I enjoy weed, as aforementioned, in that really clever LaCroix joke. <laughs> and either somebody's clapping or we should duck. Um, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna come back here. So, um, I was wandering around on Wish, and Wish has got a lot of uh, various drug-related paraphernalia. I don't know if y'all knew this, but if you want like a really sexy grinder, or uh, for your weed, like not other things, um, go to Wish. The problem is, is that I realized some information about myself I didn't know before, which is that I don't know the difference between a crack pipe and a weed pipe. <laughs> because they're all cute. <laughs> they have the cutest crack pipes on Wish, y'all. That, yeah, that, oh my god, the table, the back table woke up when I mentioned crack pipes on Wish. Crack pipes on Wish. They have really cute crack pipes, and I really don't have an end to this joke, except that, um, I think I've started smoking my weed out of a crack pipe. <laughs> but I have been your, uh, what, what did you call me? Confusingly sexy comedy aunt. I have been your confusingly sexy comedy aunt, Jessica. <laughs> Good night.